practice owners. There is so much more to being a great healthcare provider than just simply doing your job. In today's episode, we'll discuss the importance of being constantly aware of your brand emotion. You want to show your patients that you are trustworthy, present, and empathetic. Listen as Lisa and I discuss the different strategies she has used to make that crucial emotional connection with her patients and stand out from the crowd. Private practice owners, are you ready to rewrite the rules for your practice so you can have more time off, a great team, and more income while delivering better patient care? Then you are in the right place. Welcome to the Provider's Edge podcast. I'm your host, Sabrina Rompak. I'm a provider, an international peak performance keynote speaker, and a best selling author. My guests and I help providers like you control your practice, control your life, control your future. This is your defining moment to be a disruptor in healthcare. Do you know that you probably practice has an emotional message that's being communicated to your patients? And humans are driven by emotions. Although there are many of us who are logical thinkers, logical decision makers, however, in the field of health and wellness, providers are needing to serve the patient with a particular emotional need because the disease process we know is not just physical. And how are you conveying and connecting with your patients on that personal, emotional level so they can trust you? They will continue to go back to your office and referring other providers, other patients to know about your type of care. And therefore, each business not only need to know their marketing strategies, the plans, but also branding story to elicit that specific emotion in the patients that you're serving. So I invited Lisa with us today, and she is a brand strategist, a content creator. And on top of that, she used to be a nurse as well. She lives in Canada with her husband, with her son, and she is also a number one bestseller, a lot of great works. And then she also have other fun things of her doing the theater works. Mm-hmm. Um, so yes, I can't wait for Lisa to share with you all about it. Hi, Lisa. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> of course. We met just like I'm a little social butterfly, right? I'm I constantly in connection with people. And so yeah. we met through a entrepreneurial group and especially healthcare support each other, right? And this show yes. particularly is how are we optimizing us as healthcare innovators, entrepreneurs to serve not only our team better, but really optimize it so we can serve our patient better. So mm-hmm. I love it, Lisa. So give us a little rundown, your background. How did it, you decided to go into medicine and out of medicine and not focusing on the brand and the true message that we're exchanging with our clients, our patients? Yeah. So ironically, I actually didn't want to go into nursing. I was driven to do that by my mother, who I believe truly wanted the best for me. Didn't want me to have to struggle, wanted me to have that stable job, stable career. Um, As we know, there's always a demand for healthcare providers. But I'm the kind of person that no matter what I do, I will throw myself into it wholeheartedly and, uh, you know, try to be the very best that I can at it. So ICU nursing was the place that I wanted to land because I never liked doing the same thing over and over and over again. I like to use my brain. I like to be challenged. I like the fast pace of that. But I also loved those quiet moments that you had you know, with a patient or with a family, you know, when we think about the ICU, we think about gloom and doom and, but it's not, it can be a time of celebration and success and joy when somebody changes their habits or beats a disease or survives a surgery. And I loved those kinds of connection moments where you could really strip away and see the humanity of human connection And that it's not doctor to patient or nurse to patient. It's human to human. 
and how do we come together and help each other? Um, so I fell in love with that type of nursing. And then I got into teaching and into long-term care and into more of the administrative side of it. And oh boy, is that human to human connection, learning how to, you know, everyone operates differently. Everyone sees the world differently. So it was really the heart of it was getting to know the personalities of people and not taking anything personal, meeting people where they were at, always operating from that higher self. And not being reactive, but being proactive. And that was one of the biggest things that my mentor, when I was a new grad, scared to death. Because <laughs> we only learn like 30% of what you actually need to know in school. You learn 70%, if not more, when you're in you know, practice and out there. You know, my mentor always taught me to be my preceptor, to be one step ahead. If you're going to give a medication, what do you expect to see, right? If you're going to do this treatment, what do we expect to see? And I kind of translated that over into just overall how I communicate with people and really trying to be present in that moment with them. But know that if I'm going to say something that might upset someone or I have to deliver bad news or I have to give a performance review for an employee and they're a particularly difficult employee, I was already a step ahead with my self-care and my mindset and what I needed to be um, in that moment. So, so yeah, I did a lot of you know nursing and a lot of different practices. And then what I really realized was I just loved people. I loved learning about people's stories because everybody has a unique story. Everybody has a unique set of beliefs. And uh, my husband was always in business. He worked many years in an agency, a uh, creative agency, doing the online stuff. And he would start to build websites and he would start to build, you know, the technical side of things. And when I wasn't working as a nurse, I would be like, well, what's their story? And why is that important to them? And why do they want to do this work? And, you know, what happened to them? Why are they, why are they like that? And I really wanted to get to the root of that. And I realized that's the piece that I love the most was bringing out those stories and bringing out the unique piece of every individual. It's not your title that makes people consider you a great provider. It's the way that you do your job and convey your brand emotion. Your brand emotion is what others say about you. For example, she was patient, she was kind, she solved the problem, she listened to every concern I had, she took that extra second. That is so much more important than any marketing, logo, or any of that other stuff people usually worry about. None of that matters. Who you are and how you do your job is everything. That's what separates a great provider from the not so great ones. It's really who you are as a human being. It's not what you just good at technically or skillfully. Bringing out who you are, why you do what you do, and how you do it really is the secret sauce to marketing. When you know your brand emotion, you know whether you're suited in the right place with the right client, saying yes to the right speaking gig, podcast, etc. When you know your brand emotions, you can make decisions more clearly and in a more effective manner. If you enjoyed today's episode, I would highly encourage you to share this with other providers or colleagues. They will truly appreciate you for thinking about their growth. Now, let's get back to our show. Because we're not just doctors, dentists, chiropractors, surgeons, nurses, you know, healthcare providers. It's not the title. It's the way that you do it is what keeps people coming back. And it's not even marketing is what you say about yourself. Your brand emotion is what other people say about you. She was patient. She was kind. She problem solved with me. He listened to every concern I had. He took that extra second. That's your brand emotion. And that is so much more important than any marketing or logo or, you know, just any of that stuff that we worry about. None of that matters. Who you are and how you do it 
is everything. And we know that that's what separates the great nurses from the not so great nurses, the great surgeons from the not so great surgeons, right? It's, it's really who you are as a human being. And when I got into doing that work with my husband, telling stories, that's the heart of everything I do in my business, in my solo theater, I'm a storyteller. And it's that emotion that brings people in. And um, I was able to exit the nursing career and join my husband in our company. And it's been the greatest thing ever because it's not just that you're good technically, it's bringing out who you are and why you do what you do and how you do it is really the secret sauce to, uh, to marketing and to how I got into doing what I'm doing. Which is amazing. I think a lot of us in medicine are trained to from the technical side, figure out what's wrong, right? What's deviate from the norm. And therefore we got trapped into that type of thinking in every single other aspect of our lives, both from running your business and figuring out who's at fault, how, right? Because in that yeah. sense, we thought that's the only way we can move forward. We can solve problems. Instead of saying in that situation that created, what is that emotional tie to the people that you're working with, whether that is a patient that you're discussing a treatment plan and what do they give you as a feedback, right? Whether we think it is empathy or we are more grateful for our team who's been there with us, right? Whatever that meant to you. And that's part of who we are. And that's our unique ability. Just like what you're saying, Lisa, we can do so much great things. And no matter how many certification letters behind our name, there's going to be another person similar, yep. maybe a few straight down the road, right? And how are we setting ourselves apart is be able to stand out as the individual, the unique self, the way we do things, we talk about things that no one else can take that away from us. And that's the emotion and message. Uh, I think I do the same thing with uh, my private clientele, right? Like one of the six core foundations for that we look into is how are you the best leader, best team to attract A players into you, right? The biggest yeah. problem right now is the great resonation. And if we yeah. don't even do that, and that still go down to the need of human basic need, and that need to tie into that emotion. So everything is interconnected for sure. Yeah. And I remember I had a, uh, it was my labor and delivery professor. I remember in nursing school, she was lovely. And I remember I have, well, had, I guess I wouldn't say I haven't anymore, but I had really bad test anxiety. Um, I was so nervous to make a mistake. I was so afraid to fail. I would be the student that would could, could lead the study group and teach the lesson. But then when it came time to taking the actual test, I would panic. And I, you know, I would get a C. My my counterparts would get A's, and I would get a C. I would like just pass. And they're like, "How is that possible? You know this like the back of your hand." And I remember one day I was crying because I failed a test, and I couldn't believe that happened because I was so prepared and so ready, but I was just in my own head. And my nursing professor said to me, "You know, if I had to choose out of all my students who would be my nurse if I were sick," she said, "I would choose you any day over the 4.0 students." And I was like, "What do you mean?" And she was like, because you get it, you have empathy, you have connection with me, you see me as a human being. And that was such a valuable lesson that I learned early on, even in my career, was just that the way you do it is really everything. It's, it's as you were saying, it's not those, you know, designations behind our name. And I think when it comes to marketing too, you know, we're, especially in healthcare, we're taught, as you said, to see the problem and fix it. And it's very pain point e aspiration and connecting the treatment plan, the goal, the vision. We call it the benefit extension, meaning who else is going to benefit when you start to take care of yourself, make better choices, make more money, grow your business, like whatever, whatever we're asking that client or that patient to do, who is going to benefit? Right? When we can speak to that aspirational, not only is it going to help your health, but you're going to be a role model to your children. You're going to be empowering other women. You're going to be whatever it is that that end outcome is. People get behind aspiration, right? We go, I don't know. Sometimes it's even like, I don't even know what that person does, but they look happy and I want whatever they have. I don't know who they're married to, 
but they look like they, they seem so happy in their marriage. I want to know what they're doing in their marriage. You know what I mean? Like we don't always necessarily know what that thing is, but we feel it. And it's not really the pain point. It's the aspiration. We see them happy, joyous, you know, growing, succeeding. And I think that's a piece of, as marketers, we always want to go to the pain point. But the aspirational marketing is all about emotions. And it's that right. emotional, that's that happiness that pulls us in. Right. Because that's about the storytelling side that you mentioned earlier is that I actually take a group of healthcare leaders through this one year um, program. And then we meet every other week. And last nice. week I talked to them about this story branding of how yeah. are we coming from a story lead to the journey to the teaching point to your call to action, right? Which in any situation could be different. If you're sitting in right. front of a patient, then you wanted to X, Y, Z treatment option. If you're just doing a story or a website, right? A video sales letter, and then could be just leap to the next step to check out things. But you don't end there because the logical people will want to end there. But the emotional part of us want to end with something that's aspirational. All the problems you talk about, the stories, where have you gone now? What about the people that you help? Where have they able to be more free, to be able to enjoy their life, to be not stuck in bed, right? Like what is right. that that you're wrapping up? So actually this weekend, I'm going to meet with them. The homework I had for them is to write out your three minute story. And then yes. I so then we can use it repeatedly. And not only as we are sharing, let's say a treatment plan, it could be you have a specific story you want to share with your team to keep them motivated and not feel so stressed out, not feel so down. Um, maybe people weren't quote unquote appreciating what they were doing right? Like we can change that into so many different ways, including when you go into a networking event, that quick couple minutes of introduction that people hook to why you, why did you go into medicine? Why did you carry your practice? Why people need to come to you, right? And that make you stand out so much more. So one thing Lisa, I wanted to ask you guys yeah. is that for when you're working with people and thinking about how do you figure out what these emotional keywords were that you can create, then it's easier to create other things, right? So how do you even get to that point to figure out what are the, some of the basic emotion that's unique to that practice? Yeah, you start to go back and look at all the moments in your life when you had to make a hard decision. Not so I know I just got done saying we we should go aspirational and all the happy things, not in storytelling. You want to go back to the times when you didn't have answers, when you didn't know what you were gonna do, and that required a decision from you that required you to pull something out of yourself that you didn't think you had. So when I met my husband, I was from Pennsylvania. He was from here in Toronto, Canada. And one of us had to move. And we had no idea how we were going to immigrate and how we were going to do that. But we knew that we weren't going to let a border tell us that we couldn't be together. So we ended up hiring an immigration lawyer, you know, and figuring out. But that commitment and that that decision that we made that one of us was going to move this wasn't going to be easy but we loved each other and we were not a promise is a promise is a promise we were going to keep that promise that showed me that I can problem solve navigate and figure anything out when I had to I had no idea how to do that right so you go back to those moments where something didn't work out in your favor and you had to figure it out you had to make a decision and it will reveal your resilience, your hardworking, your commitment, your integrity. It will reveal the things that you want to start to tell people and show. Because when we say, I am very smart and I know how to figure things out, people go, hmm. I don't know about that, right? Like our normal inclination goes, I don't think I trust you or I believe you. 
When I say I had absolutely no idea how to immigrate to Canada with zero family support because my family thought I was crazy and did not approve, I had no idea how to, they didn't recognize my nursing license in Canada that I was practicing in the US. I had no idea how to start a new career, start a new relationship and move to a different country at 21 years old. But I figured it out. That tells you things about me without me having to say, this is who I am and this is what's important to me. So story reveals everything. Story reveals those characteristics. Story makes people instantly trust you. Because someone else is going, yeah, I remember when I had to figure that thing out and I didn't think I was ever going to be able to do that. I'm like you, you're like me. I see you, you see me. Tell me more about what you do. So the story builds trust and opens up their ears. But you got to go back to those maybe not so pleasant moments where you were overweight, broke, heartbroken, in debt, whatever it was that you had to figure out in your life. It's in those deeper, darker moments that reveals who you truly are. And that's the stuff people want to know. Right. And for your story, not only reviews your family oriented, right? You trust yourself, you're exploratory, you can problem solve, right? And these are the core skills that can transferable to anything else in the world. And knowing that nursing was something that you truly enjoy, you learn, but you also understood that when you work with your husband on the designing part, you actually can figure out the gap is that not just building a beautiful website, but what are you trying to tell the story from that? And Mm -hmm. then you start getting into the additional skill that you might not even know that you had and then go into a new direction, right? So people in practice, it could be, maybe you opened up a practice right when you're a fresh grad. What gives you that courage, right? What are these, uh, who are these mentors that able to guide you to that successful path? Or because there's, it's not just like poor to rich, right? It, I mean, there's a lot of ups and downs in entrepreneurship. You are healthcare entrepreneurs after all, when you decide to create a new innovation or um, really figure out, I wanted to serve my community my own way, not just part of a large organization who's beating me down into these XYZ's guidance, right? So if I created this practice, that there's a why, there's a reason, there's probably a story that got you there. And while you keep going, there are probably even more story to confirm why you needed to stay, why you wanted to stay, right? So these things yeah. can really help us to think about to get to that tip of the diamond, that shiny sparkle. But guess what? Not all diamonds come out perfect, right? Sparkle. We have to shape it. We have to really like make them form them into that way. Right. And it also helps you when you know your brand emotions. It helps you make decisions about what clients you take on, what opportunities you say yes and no to. Um, I remember when I was a director of care at a retirement home. And they were asking me to admit a lot of patients with cognitive decline that were more suited for a long-term care. I knew that our staff in the retirement couldn't handle that type of care and it wasn't going to be safe for the the patient. And they were like, no, 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 we got to fill the beds and we got to get their money. and And I was like, that's not who I am. Like, this is not going, I, this this might be a job for someone else. This is not a job for me because I don't look at people as dollar signs. I look at safety and care and concern is like the number one thing for me. So when you know your brand emotions, you know whether you're suited in the right place with the right clients, saying yes to the right speaking gigs, podcast, like whatever it is, when you know your brand emotions, you can make decisions a lot clearer and more effective as well. Perfect. And we know it's definitely hard to get all that sorted out yourself. That's why talking to someone out loud, especially pe- person like Lisa, who does that every day, right? She bring out the best in you to create that emotion and make sure that brand emotion is in every single marketing content. And so when you talk to people, clients, networking, and your whole website, everything's cohesive. It's not like 
wait, what, what are they talking about? Right? Like mm-hmm. no discrepancy and disconnection. So it's really crucial to have that conversation. At the same time, we can be really smart in a lot of things, but it's hard to optimize everything in life. And sometimes really, why are we needing to have it all? Right? It's about to be able to see it all and then be able to say, I'm fulfilled and satisfied, but it's not to say, I have to have do it all, done it all, right? right? And that's why for our speakers, I ask them, do a quick 10 question key whole life assessment on themselves because we are all here. We're all humans. We're here on this show because we support each other and mm-hmm. encouraging other practitioners to stay in practice so you can have more freedom, more profit, and really more satisfaction both for yourself, your team, and for your patients. So mm-hmm. Lisa, when you, when you saw that whole life will, what are yeah. some thoughts that pop up? Yeah, I've always been really grounded in my purpose and my, you know, mental well-being and, and all of that. But it was like the physical one. That sometimes we don't realize there's a cost in, in not a bad way. Hearing people's story and getting to the root of who they are, learning about the dark moments that they're endured and the decisions that they had to make can be a very heavy and taxing experience after a while. Self-care has to be just as equally important when giving so much and pouring your heart out every day. Even though you might be grounded in your purpose, family, and finances, sometimes you won't realize the effect that having an emotional conversation with a client is having on you until it's too late. Being present and practicing self-care is vital to your success as a healthcare professional. If you are not taking care of yourself, how are you going to take care of other people? Working out, eating healthy, having regular meals, making sleep a priority, practicing gratitude, and staying connected are all great ways to unwind and make sure your own health is good before worrying about others. There's a cost when you give all of yourself, when you are a service-based entrepreneur, or pardon me, a service-based business owner, where like for me, pulling out people's stories and really hearing their stories and getting to the root of who they are and when they were in those dark moments and the decisions that they had to make, um, it can be heavy listening to that. So it's like the self-care for me has to be just as equal when I'm giving so much and pouring. So it's like we say, you know, you got to pour back into your cup. Uh, it made me really aware that even though I'm grounded in my purpose and I, I'm grounded in love and my family and my finances and like, you know, all of the, all of the on paper things are perfect. Sometimes I don't allow myself the rest and the recovery because I don't realize that having an emotional conversation with a client is like running a 5k. Like you would run a 5k and then you'd be like, okay, I need to go refuel. I need to go hydrate. I need to rest. We don't always realize that the emotional toll, or if you've had to have a difficult conversation with an employee, with a client, that we've got to recover after that. So that was just like a good awareness for me that I do a lot of physically taxing things and I recover well from that. I work out every day. I take my health very seriously, but the emotional rest and recovery um, is just as important. So that was the piece for me that I've got to start looking at how I schedule my day and what breaks I allow myself throughout the day and all of that sort of stuff. So it's just neat. It's always great to, I love those kinds of things because I don't believe we're ever at mastery. Like we're always growing. We're always evolving. We're always learning. Um, and I just love looking at that kind of stuff. So that's what came up for me. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you for sharing your authentic side. And I think at the end of the day, that's that's it, right? It's not like, oh, I got it all, right? Great. Then eventually we're going to see things start shifting and it's okay to shift because priority changes. And and we start realizing, okay, maybe this is my priority today, but tomorrow, maybe how am I going to fix that? So everything become more rounded, more holistic, more of 
I'm okay, right? Like at the end of the day, I'm okay. I'm here. I served. I am representing who I am. I have people see me as that unique person, right? The emotional side. I'm making that connection, and I think that, right? Everyone gonna have their own different version of success. For me, that's it, right? Just like you, like at the、yeah. end of the day, if we can say I have the freedom to choose the people I wanted to serve, the people I want to work with. The way that I wanted to do it, the time that I wanted to do it, then of course it's unlimited possibility, and you can totally be that finisher and not just a starter for anything that you want to do. So I appreciate you for being here.、Uh, people's gonna want to talk to you more about how to dig that out, right? Their their unique ability, their story. How would you like them to contact you, or if you have anything that you like to share with the audience? Yes, so I、uh, when you go on my website, everything is my name, so it's easy to find Lisa Pizik. So L I S A P E Z I K, as you can see on the screen, dot、uh, com is my website. That's also my Instagram, my Facebook, Twitter. You know, all of the podcasts, all of that you'll find、um, is under my name. And then Infinite Design House is our company. Want to see some of the work that we've done? But I do have a very quick three-part video series. It's a free opt-in,、um, and it's the three must-haves for your business to grow. And it's your purpose, your platform, and your product. And that is a free, just free, quick little three five-minute videos that just get you back in that mindset of that. Of of your brand emotion of why you're you're doing what you're doing. It's not so much you're capable and smart. Get back in alignment with the why, and and the what will figure itself out. It's helping you get back in alignment with the why. I'm making sure that you're visible and people know how they can work with you and what you can do for them. Sometimes we don't get business because we simply don't ask. Or we don't make ourselves available, so it takes you back to that. So、um, you can pick that up on my website, and、um, yeah, that's that's it. That'd be great. Perfect. I appreciate your time, appreciate your energy, appreciate your just sharing yourself with the rest of us.、Mm-hmm. All right, everyone. Until next time, and share with us someone that you truly believe this will help them, because I'm sure they will appreciate you for thinking of them. Bye bye. Ask yourself honestly: Do you feel like you are lacking in how you connect on an emotional level with your patients? Simply showing you care, listening intensely, and being empathetic are what sets apart the good physician from the great ones. Providers back in the day calls this best at manner, and it shouldn't be overlooked. There's no doubt that patients are more. Apt to return time and again, and prefer you to others if they feel like you truly care and take the time to listen to other thoughts, feelings, and issues. Technical knowledge and practice can only get you so far. Learning how to better connect with patients and employees is obtainable, and if it doesn't come natural to you. There are key practices that you can start putting into play today, right now, and start seeing your patient relationship shift in a totally positive direction. Totally positive direction. Below are easy and applicable ways to boost your patient connection on an emotional level. Number one, see your patient first and foremost as a human. Yes. We are trained to see their symptoms, diagnose their problems, and treating those specific issues. But there is a person behind the alignment. People want to connect with their provider they trust and one who actively listens. Empathy goes a long way in making a patient feel cared for. When this Takes place. It's not just a provider to a patient anymore. It's a human-to-human connection. Number two, learn to be proactive, not reactive. Get to know the personalities of the patients you often work with. Even if a few of them are occasionally difficult, it's important not to take anything personally. They are human, but you are human too. Meet your patient where they are. And operate from that high self in order to be proactive in how you treat them, not reactive. 
they are there to seek a solution for their issue. Their emotions or behaviors have nothing to do with you. Your power lies in how you respond to them and can help their situation. Number three, be fully present with your patient. Assuming or judging while you're having a conversation with your patient only creates issue, bias, and does neither party any good. A patient can definitely sense if you're truly present and understanding. One thing you can do before meeting with a patient who you know is difficult is to prepare your mindset to be positive even before you walk into that exam room to give you the best chance of treating that patient the way they deserve to be treated. Number four, learn about your patient through their stories. Ask your patients about their lives, breaks down that provide our patient barrier and humanize both people involved. It also helps to create a sense of trust and friendliness. They notice that you are making an effort to get to know them and are more apt to be open, calm, and honest with you in return. Stories are the bridge to creating lasting connections with your patient. Number five, be aware of the emotion behind your brand. Who you are and how you do things is what keeps people coming back. Patients aren't impressed by your title or by how many letters are behind your last name. How you make them feel is what they remember. That is your brain emotion. Your brain emotion reaches further than a logo or marketing campaign ever could. There are practical, applicable things you can do today to better connect with your patients, recognizing them first as a human, being present, and proactive with them, learning their stories, and being fully aware of your brain emotion can all help you to deepen that connection. Thank you for listening to today's episode. You're listening to me right now. As are, you're frustrated by how healthcare practices are running today. I'm with you. I'm looking to change the conversation that we're having in this field. It starts with me and it starts with you. I want to connect with you and get to know your own struggle or challenges within the healthcare industry. Visit sabrinarombach.com forward slash connect where you are going to find all of my social media platforms. Feel free to send me a direct message. If you like me, prefer speaking, then you can record a voice message on the page. So come to sabrinarombat.com forward slash connect and let's continue the conversation. She really gets the conversation. She understands she's an incredible listener. We were talking about worthiness and she really understands the concept of it, how it affects people in their businesses, in their clinics, in, in their daily life, in their relationships. So I just want to encourage you to one, listen to our show, but to jump on board and start listening to this woman because she has so much insight and wisdom that you don't want to miss out. So come to sabrinarunback.com forward slash connect and let's continue the conversation.